Thank you. I am Flora Lloyd with the Missoula Current, and I'm here with Jen Barilli, who is the Resettlement Director at the International Rescue Committee in Missoula. So starting off with my first question, when was the International Rescue Committee in Missoula founded? Well, our organization opened in Missoula in August of 2016, um, but many folks in Missoula remember that the IRC was the Refugee Resettlement Agency in Missoula back in the late 70s to early 90s. Uh, so we were excited to return. Yeah, and so how have refugees uniquely been affected by the pandemic? Well, of course, you know, like everyone else, they're affected in many ways. Uh, the, you know, some folks have lost their jobs, um, just trying to keep up on the different changes with uh, regulations. Um, but I think the, the biggest challenge is the, the language barrier and some of the cultural barriers that our families face. So, you know, how do you keep up with all the changing COVID-19 information if maybe English isn't your first language or you're not fluent in English yet? Um, so, you know, we've been really uh, taking the time to translate materials, use our on-staff interpreters uh, to translate a lot of information in regard to COVID so that our families can, can understand. They know, you know, about wearing masks, um, how to wash your cloth masks, um, you know, just all of the, the Missoula County and the state regulations. Yeah, and so then what unique impacts or challenges have you as an organization faced with the pandemic? Well, some of you, some, some folks might know that um, just due to COVID, refugee resettlement has paused a little bit. Um, so, you know, that really impacts the refugee families that we have here who are waiting for their loved ones to come. Um, so, you know, granted, our priority is to keep our staff safe, our clients safe, and the Missoula community safe. So, you know, of course, it makes sense during COVID. To, to postpone arrivals, international arrivals in particular. Uh, so that's, that's impacted though uh, some of our work and some of the families that we have here that are waiting for their family members to come. Um, and then, I mean, I think, you know, like I said, like every other Missoulian or Montanan, you know, there are the challenges, the economic challenges to COVID. Um, but, you know, our team has been helping people apply for unemployment, things like that, making sure they understand uh, how to navigate that whole system. Yeah, definitely. And so with all of the quick changes that are happening in the federal administration and all over the country surrounding different policies on immigration and uh, those sorts of things, have you seen a large impact in your organization and the work that you all do? Well, I mean, like I previously mentioned, I think really just a slowdown in refugee resettlement has has really just impacted um, the families that we have here. Uh, so we're, you know, we're still continuing to serve the refugee families that have resettled to Missoula. So we, you know, we serve families for up to five years. So we're still serving people um, with housing needs, employment needs, but I would say even though there's been a reduction in arrivals of refugee families to Missoula, our work has really ramped up with the COVID response. Um, you know, just like, like I mentioned, um, helping people file for unemployment, people who maybe didn't need to rely on public benefits that might need to get signed up again. So we've really been focusing our efforts on that. Um, we've been focusing, uh, I think I think a lot of people probably around the US are noticing that, uh, noticing how important digital literacy skills are. Um, and we do have families, um, you know, that maybe haven't used a computer much. Uh, so that's shifted our services a little. Um, we've been lucky enough to get a grant uh, to, to uh, deliver laptops to some of our newer families. They have a special operating system uh, for folks who actually haven't really used computers before. Um, so we've also shifted our focus to digital literacy because a lot of our services now are remote. Uh, so we, for example, we normally have cultural orientation classes in person to teach families about life here in Missoula, about education and healthcare. Uh, so we've moved that to, to remote learning. 
Yeah. And so has your organization made any long-term changes for in case COVID lasts a lot longer or comes back and there's a second wave or how are you all gearing up for that? Well, you know, as a, as an international nonprofit, um, we have some pretty uh, great policies in place about keeping our clients and our staff safe. So right now, on the local level, level the Missoula office is closed. Um, so we're just trying to really, uh, most of us are working from home, serving our families from home. Um, and, you know, I, don't, I think we just hope that refugee arrivals will resume again to Missoula and things will pick back up. But right now we're just trying to adjust, I think, like most businesses and nonprofits to this, this new, uh, I guess, these new changes. Um, but long term, you know, we hope that we can continue to do this work, uh, serve the families that we're, we're currently serving, but to be able to work with other vulnerable refugees that, that need assistance. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Oh, you're welcome, Flora. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely.